esteem next speaker, Dr. Claudia Pecoraro, DG Research and Innovation Unit. Thank you uh, to all of you uh, for the invitation. First of all, I would like to apologize uh, because uh, my head of unit, Elisabetta Balzi, uh, was supposed to come, so on her behalf, but it's me <laughs> with you today. Um, thank you for, uh, for the, this invitation because it enhances the discussion towards uh, the Mediterranean green transition. And it is very important because we heard uh, um, about the, the challenges that we have to face. I heard about uh, uh, plastic pollution, about the ports, the need of, uh, uh, to make a transition towards uh, uh, a green economy. All of this is extremely important. And indeed, it's one of the main challenges that Europe, and not only Europe, is facing. So, <clears throat> In order to respond to one of uh, these uh, um, world challenges, the European Commission has launched last September 2021 uh, 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 five missions. Among them, one is to restore our ocean and the waters. In case you need, uh, the slides are available. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, and the waters. Uh, and uh, um, maybe I can ask to, to change. Okay. So sorry about that. Um, uh, so we were talking about the, the importance of uh, um, this mission. This mission uh, has uh, three main objectives and two enablers. Uh, the first objective uh, is linked to the biodiversity, the second one to um, pollution, and the third one to make uh, the um, blue economy more carbon neutral and circular. Each of these uh, objectives has a specific uh, target. So, and uh, to complement uh, the, the mission, we need uh, two important enablers. One is the digital twin oceans. Probably you have uh, heard about that. If not, you will hear in the next month. And the second one, which is extremely important because uh, today we were discussing, discussing about the importance uh, to include all stakeholders. Uh, is the public mobilization. And in the, with this, we mean all stakeholders, all categories, citizens, and youth included. Uh, as to prove uh, uh, what I'm saying about the enablers, last week in Marseille we have uh, one big event about the mission where we include the citizens and uh, the, um, uh, the youth. In the next slide, uh, I will uh, show you how the mission will work. Um, the mission has developed four lighthouses. So um, you were wondering what are these lighthouses. The lighthouses basically are spaces of transformation to piloting and demonstrate, develop, and then deploy the, the, any innovation uh, to uh, contribute to the mission objectives. Each of the uh, four lighthouses on the Mediterranean, um, so it's important for the discussion today, one of the lighthouses on the Mediterranean, the Baltic and North Sea, the Danube <coughs> River, and the Arctic and uh, Coast uh, um, lighthouses. Each of these lighthouses is linked to one of the three objectives of the mission. Uh, to go back to the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean is linked to, to the uh, pollution, plastic pollution and chemical pollution. In the next slide, please, I uh, represented in particular the focus on the Mediterranean lighthouses, and as you could see, these uh, lighthouses aim at reaching the targets, specific targets, for instance, to reduce by at least 50% of plastic litter at the sea. Um, <clears throat> these are a couple of examples that I give in the next slide, please. Um, here, uh, the, the mission uh, will uh, um, be implemented in two phases, let's say. Uh, from this year to 2021, we have the first phase, which is to deploy, deploy innovation at local level. And the second one will be the scale up of innovation. Now, we are here. <clears throat> at the, the, the first phase. What is important for you to, um, to, uh, to, retail, uh, uh, to recall today is that the mission is rooted under the Horizon Europe program. So 
It is rooted, it is based on the uh, Horizon Europe program, but it goes beyond the research and innovation. And this is the key novelties of the mission because it uh, enhances to establish, to set synergies among local programs, regional policies, and other financial instruments in order to avoid overlapping, but to reach together uh, the objectives of the mission. So here, the novelty is that the mission aims at co-design, co-shaping at local level, according to the lighthouses, uh, these, uh, um, uh, to drive the change at local level. That's important to, uh, uh, to stress. Uh, so, um, uh, as I said, the, the mission starts from uh, RNI, from uh, the uh, research, uh, uh, the Horizon Europe uh, program. And for this, uh, during the work program of last year and this year, we have launched uh, four specific coordinator support actions, more known as a CSA, per each lighthouses. In particular today, I'm highlighting the Mediterranean. Um, for the Mediterranean, we had already closed and evaluated one CSA, one support action, uh, with the aim of plastic pollution. But there is another call, which is still open until September, and the focus is uh, the chemical pollution. This is for the Mediterranean, but as I said, there are other, uh, for, uh, um, other funds for other uh, lighthouses. But again, it is not only uh, Horizon Europe research. We need to go behind. We need to find these synergies that we were discussing today. It's extremely important. In the next slide, please, <clears throat> we can skip it because I already, I see that, that he's looking at me for the time. So uh, I just uh, uh, wanted to recall the need to enhance synergies, which is the aim of the, 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 the mission across different EU programs with the member state regions that it could align the regional national programs towards the objective of the mission. In the next slide, please. We can skip also this because I already highlighted. Okay, here. Here is the key, and it is extremely important because we were, uh, I heard about charter, and I heard also about the need to rely on something. So here we have the mission charter. The charter is not binding. So it's not a law that you have to sign and it can scare people and uh, key stakeholders. It's not binding. It's a voluntary basis, but it is a way to show your contribution towards the objective of the mission. So this gives a sense of ownership and a community of practice where you can share. In the next slide, I explain how it works. Per each uh, uh, category, uh, um, the, the charter uh, uh, mobilizes uh, programs, instruments, resources uh, uh, for, this, uh, <clears throat> for the objective of the mission. Uh, the same, it's important also because uh, it enhances uh, the support of innovation, innovative ecosystem at local level. And uh, uh, it shares the evidence-based knowledge and data because by adhering to the charter, you enter in a community where where you can share uh, good practice, you can get the knowledge that you need, and also you can see what are other opportunities. <clears throat> At the same time, it's important because it mobilizes all uh, stakeholders, not only one specific category, but all. In the next slide, please. Uh, here it's important because uh, the charter of the mission, uh, it's, uh, today I'm announcing uh, the charter, but publicly, it will take place uh, in Lisbon next week uh, on 30 June, where there will be during the UN uh, Ocean Conference in Lisbon, a one side event to launch the, um, the uh, uh, charter. Uh, and here you can find the link about uh, uh, the information of the charter. Also, if you are a really carer of uh, uh, ocean and waters, if you really want to um, enhance these synergies and uh, 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 align your programs and uh, policies and activities, you can endorse the charter. And uh, in this link, uh, you can find also how you can endorse the charter. So thank you very much indeed.